Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. Rush in 101, classes in session. Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek. I mean, these guys making the killer with no competition. Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys. Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed. They cannot be beat, take a seat. Watch them do their thing on the MIC, face to feet. They cannot be seen like JC. Oh my goodness, it's a killing spree. Yeah? Hey everybody, this is former WWE superstar Al Snow and you're listening to Wrestling IQ 101. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew alongside Derek. You. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And today, we're sitting with the Messiah of old school, Sean Donovan, and the Bayonne badass, mm-hmm. Dan Moff, sent to slaughter. How's it going, guys? It's going great, man. Well, uh, it's really cool to be here. See the uh, see a little setup, you know, and uh, I said it's good to be here. This will be my first one that I do with you guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm back for yeah. round two. Yeah, this is awesome, man. This is I feel feel like honored because it's like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but sent to slaughter. This is your first interview you guys are doing together. Is this is the first one. This is our first. Yeah, this is our first <laughs> yeah. This is together. like this history going yeah. down right if, here, if man. If this doesn't go well, we could be. Victims number one. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we just pretty much, we just launched our uh, our campaign, as you could yeah. say, yesterday. Uh-huh. And uh, like I said his timing is perfect. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, we just, uh, you know, we shot the feeler out there, you know, for months, and uh, we ran a couple trials, you know, a couple matches here and there, and um, from day one, it clicked. Yeah. And like I said, we just uh, we partnered up with uh, hashtag Dope Productions and Coltrane yeah. Mosley, who's a godsend. A guy's a saint, and um, Johnny Ball worked on Dope too. Right, right. Uh, they helped us out, and they said, "Listen, guys, you know whatever you guys need, you know, um, let us know." And you know, knock on wood, you know, he's been our guy, yeah. you know, r- right now, and. And you know we, we we delivered this feeler out there, and we went out there, and I think it's got some pretty positive uh, positive feedback, and you know we just want to see where it goes. You know, and I feel motion out in PA, mm-hmm. and uh, you know there was an opportunity for me to come out there with with Moff, and uh, you know there was an opportunity for us to team up, but we always you know follow a lot of the same style of wrestling, so we understand that old school style of, of working with wrestling and you know hey let, let's just see what happens you know we'll have fun and i don't think even he and i realized till we walked back to the locker room just how much we clicked and we gelled i mean there was just we didn't have to say and talk to each other in the ring we just give each other a look and we knew what was coming we knew what was next and um you know then the conversation just started happening and like i said a couple of trials and you know, we feel like there, there's really something there that we can, uh, we can roll with. I mean, as good as he is in, in, in singles, and I can't get rid of him. I see him. <laughs> you know, we work out together. You know, we we tan together. We, it's like, we tan together. We tan, together. <laughs> we tan the same place. Well, the same bed. Bed. No, not the same bed. No, <laughs> this is, he'll get there early, Ooh. and he's tanning. Right, so it's usually there's two booths at the gym. And I'll go and I'll shut it off on him. I'll, I'll, I'll shut it up. <laughs> or I'll start banging on the door and he texts me back. Stop it. Yeah, or I'll yell outside and the people in front of us are like, why is this guy yelling in a tanning booth to, to stop? Oh, man. You know, yeah. so. it, it's kind of funny because the last time we spoke, you were in the midst of destroying Pat Buck. And mm-hmm. last time you talked, you were part of a tag team with uh, you know, Dirty and Durable. Yeah. And it's crazy how this is kind of uh, elevated. Um, you know, you won the Silver Championship. I mean, you were in the midst of wrestling with, with legends, you know, getting your butt whooped um, <laughs> from the Million Dollar much. Man and, and stuff like that. And He was, he was putting people over. That's what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, doing business, man. I'm doing yeah. business. Um, you know, when you won the Silver Championship, you know, did you feel vindicated that everything that you were saying finally uh, – became realized um it was a lot of it was a lot of hard work um mm-hmm. you know when wrestle pro um 
you know, approached me and, you know, put the silver title on me. Um, it was a lot of pressure. You know, it, it, it was a new baby. Um, you know, and it was also, you know, the secondary title to the company. It's the silver title. It's mm -hmm. not the gold title. Um, you know, so Pat basically said, hey, man, you know, it's not the title that makes the guy. It's the guy that makes the title. So he said, I want you to, well, like any business, you know, you have to have a plan. You know, mm -hmm. and he said to me, he says, I want you to elevate this title, you know, make the title and let's get it off and running. So um, I was like, all right, man, great. It's all you need to do is tell me, you know, and um, I'm all in, you know, whatever you need from me is that's what you're going to get done. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, I just I want you to have fresh new challengers and boom, boom, boom. And we ran with it. And, you know, no disrespect at all, you know, to the gold title. But uh, I feel like um, it was a goal. It was a matter of pride. Mm -hmm. And, not, you know, for the most part of the year, the silver title closed out. The silver title was closing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know the shows, and as like I said, it's no disrespect to the gold title, but or you know or its champion, which is Chris, and, and I love Chris Avery Cooling to death. He's, he's a great performer, great guy, great mm -hmm. friend of mine. But um, you know, but I I I, I saw a, a matter of pride, and um, it was my duty, you know take that title elevate it and make sure that when that uh, when that next guy got it it meant something and yeah i remember yeah, I when those shows would close out the thank you mops chance would always break out um i mean you you and john morrison had a great match or johnny impact uh you and pco i mean that's yeah. last time i was at wrestle pro you you guys absolutely killed that uh, and then you and bear bronson, bear bronson yeah. you know you elevated that guy oh my god that that was a crazy matchup you guys had um at the rec center and, and even you man you on the spot challenges uh ladder matches you know been there with fala ba and and um, you know matt mcintosh and, and mm -hmm. anthony bowens i mean how was it being put in that position knowing that you were just inches away from grabbing that that medal you know it's 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 um it's great to be in the ring with guys like that that were home that are homegrown stars mm -hmm. with Wrestle Pro, so it's very very appreciative to be put in that position to work with those guys, and you know, and that was something that you know I, I took very seriously because you know, uh, like I said the last time you and I spoke, Michael Blake and I were getting the tag team piece off the ground and. You know, some unfortunately, some personal things came into play for him, and he needed to step away from the business. And you know, like anybody, if you want to stay involved in the business, you can't hang around trying to find a new tag partner, things like that. You have to go back to the well. You've got to use your resources, and you've got to reinvent yourself. And you know, I was a single star before that, and I knew I could do singles again. I just needed to find that that right piece of the puzzle and you know through guys like moff picking his brain other guys every day yeah every day every day it's a lot of work you know and guys are saying hey what do i need to do i'm gonna do this you know maybe try this and he'll shoot straight with me a lot of other guys won't yeah. he's the realest guy that will shoot with me and will tell me no this idea sucks or no this idea is good or hey you're onto something here what if you twist it and make it better mm -hmm. uh and some other guys too that i picked a lot of their brains so you know, to be able to reinvent myself and, you know, being put in that position was not by design. You know, it's me continuing to push and push and show what I can do in the ring and what I can offer WrestlePro and, and what I can offer the fans, you know. And I think if you look at our roster, push comes to shove, um, myself and Bobby Wayward are neck and neck as far as it comes to how the crowd responds to us in that light. You know, obviously, you know, Moff is in a different light there, but, you know, and I pride myself on that. And that's, that's what drives me is that friendly locker room competitive competition. Mm -hmm. You know, who's going to get, I guess for lack of a better term, who's going to get booed worse tonight, me or Bobby? <laughs> yeah. So, and that's, but that's just all part of being competitive in the business, just as competitive as, as Moff is of, you know, being able to elevate the silver title like he did. That's just what we're made of in this business.
Nice. Now, now being such uh, single stars that you guys are separately, mm-hmm. um, do you guys think of yourselves as like more than just a, a tag team, like an innovative tag team, that this isn't just going to help you guys go out their tag team titles, but actually help you guys individually in singles as well as far as that? Or is it just a tag team effort, you two together? You can start. Well, I love tag wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's where I started my career. Yeah. You know, um, and I was a part of something special for a real long time. Yeah. You know? But like I say, you know, some there comes a time where, you know, things run their course and you have to move on. And, you know, he did the same thing. <clears throat> and, you know, through trial and error, you have to try different things. You got to see what works, what doesn't work. You always got to have an open ear while 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 having the pulse of the people, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. the people is the most important piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Without those fans, man, you have nothing, mm-hmm. you know. So you got to see what works, see what doesn't work, see what works for you, and um, you also have to you have to have an open ear for criticism. Uh, uh, you have to have thick skin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I always tell my guys this, and I have my guys, you know, and I always tell them, I'm like, you may not always like what you're going to hear, but I'm always going to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. You may not like it, but I'm not going to sugarcoat anything because then I'm not your friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm going to give it to you raw. I'm going to give it to you hard and I'm going to give it to you fair. Mm-hmm. But it's, I'm being honest, you know, and that's what we did with each other. And, hey, listen, I told him, I said, look, man, this is what I need, you know. And like I said, it was one time, Sam Mo said, hey, listen, I have this match. You know, I couldn't think of better guys, you know, to, to of a better guy to ask to come and, 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 and work this match against us at the family reunion. I said, well, there's not another guy that I'd rather do it with. He said, who? Oh, he said, Sean Donovan. He said, who's that? I said, I've never bought you shit. And when I bring you this guy and I see, and you see what we do, you're going to shake my hand. So I turned, I said, damn, I said, uh, you know, I just put I just put everything on you. <laughs> I said, so we go up there, man. You better not fuck up. <laughs> so... But no, nah, we did, not you know, and like the first, the first thing that we did, we had to get rid of his electric tape. We got rid of the electric <laughs> tape. You're not allowed to do that anymore. You're not allowed to wear like pink laces and stuff like that, and like pink loud colors are off the table. You know, we're gonna be, you know, black and white, man. We're gonna be shit kickers and and ass kickers and. You know, we're going to be two bulldozers. We're going to talk shit. We're going to get heat. We're going to be real deal heels. The old yeah. school way, the way it was ought to be. Wow. And, hey, that's crazy because you're so colorful. Your outfits are yeah. always on point. I but don't if know you're a heel, is. man, yeah. you got to be. I'm a firm believer mm-hmm. that if you're a heel, you got to be black, man. Black to the core. Wow. Man. Black to the core. The baby face got all the cool colors, man. Yeah, yeah. You always spot <laughs> on, spot on every time, man. The boots, everything. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's just you know, his closets. Yeah, you know, I remember <laughs> yeah. when growing up in, in the rec center at JAP. Every time you would come out as the champion, always something different. Yeah. Every time, doesn't matter who you were facing, mm-hmm. whoever was looking across the way, always on point. Even at uh, those three letters that no one talks about anymore in WrestlePro, <laughs> always on point, man. Yeah. Every time. That's pretty true. I feel like I haven't seen you wear the same thing twice ever. I don't think I ever have. I heard you say that. He's <laughs> like, it's like Ray Mysterio. You just, I can't wait to see what that's you fun. what you do in the ring and what you wear, man. It's always Dude, that's cool. You're just making it all worth it for me right now. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna tell the wife. Listen, I gotta get more stuff because <laughs> you, got you, know. excuse, you got an excuse now. Even you, Sean, you've always changed your appearance and stuff like that. And. I think it's staying one step ahead of the game, you know, and, and, and again, one of the things that, you know, I think as, as I've gotten to know Moth over the long haul a little bit is that our careers in certain ways kind of mirrored each other a little bit through our experiences, you know, same like him. I started in a tag team, mm-hmm. you know, but again, eventually things have to change. You have to evolve. You have to move on. Mm-hmm. And again, it's trial and error, you know, the, the whole, 
you know, you know, and as he talks about being, you know, you got to be black and white sometimes. You got to be that old school villain. You know, I was in a different direction at that point. I was that more of that flamboyant kind of a heel where I had loud colors, but, you know, still we're jaw jacking with the crowd. But, you know, after talking to him off a lot about and a few other people, you know, that wasn't that wasn't me anymore because you just started to see the real version of me really just start to come to the surface. And, you know, um, you know, I had no choice but to get rid of electrical tape because he took all of it and threw it in the garbage when I wasn't looking. <laughs> so, but that's fine. It's but you know what story. it is? It is. It is. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? At, at the same token, you know, I had been working on some different things, you know, because it's funny, you know, he was the first guy I went to because I was really looking at trying to revamp my look, you know, in a different way because I was starting to feel a little stagnant. And, you know, I just said, you know, after 15, 16 years at that point, I had never worn long I would never worn short trunks. I'd always worn long trunks. So I said, you know what, let me just try something. And I got a basic pair. And first thing I did was I sent him a picture. I said, what do you think? I put the boots on, put the whole kit and caboodle on. You know, I took a picture like every, every other shitty indie worker right in their bedroom. And, you know, I just said, I said, what do you think? And he said, that's you. Nice. He said, that's the intangible that's been missing. So I started building upon that, picking him, a few of my other buddies, you know, brains and, you know, again, the opportunity, you know, came to, to work with him and it, it at that family reunion show with WXW and that really brought a different side of me out there. And I'm like, this is after all these years, this is this is me finally just being able to be me and just not giving a excuse me, not giving a shit anymore. Yeah. I'm taking what's mine. Nice. Now, speaking of changes, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. You started to become really badass once you got that beard, man. <laughs> when did you start letting this thing grow, man? You know, I, like you said, I mean, over the years, and I've kind of like moth a little bit too. Like, again, I've always wanted to stay one step ahead in changing my look. You know, right. I always, I'm, I'm kind of like him. I'm a gear whore. Mm -hmm. Always updating my gear, colors. Always thinking six months down the line, when is it going to be time to change my gear, my colors, different style, different ideas. Yeah. Um, but at one point, a number of years ago, I had a full beard and I just really, I kind of grew it out kind of bushy. But, you know, I was always a real big fan of Jim the Anvil Neidhart, you know, God rest his soul. Because again, growing up, you know, what got me into wrestling was tag team wrestling. Yeah. You know, Heart wow. Foundation, all those guys. And he, to me at that point in time, seven, eight months ago, nobody, nobody in wrestling has a goatee like that now. He was the only guy back in the 80s that had a goatee that pointed. Yeah. And in growing that long beard I did a couple of years ago, I'm like, I wonder if I grew this thing out that maybe I, the way I trim it, the, the type of chin that I have, maybe I can get it to that point. Yeah. But it just wasn't coming out that way. But at the end of the day, just the way I started looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, trim the sides, keep the front kind of bushy and, you know, I said, you know what, fuck it, I'm not even going to dye my beard anymore. Just let it grow. To have some of that gray in there, just kind of that salt and pepper look. Yeah. And again, I just started letting it grow, and it just it, it just fit my look. It just fit that old school, yeah. just bruiser look. And I said, you know what, I'm, I'm sticking with this. Yeah. You know, and then I was I was looking for another change. I said, screw it. I looked in the mirror one day. I, I said, you know what, shave my whole head off. Yeah. <laughs> so again, it's just like, like him and I talk. It's just one stay on... One step ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, yeah. My, my, I, I twiddled with the idea. Then I got to ask the girl over here. What do you think? Because he's gonna, but he's gonna give me that. He's gonna give me that honest opinion of yes, it looks good, or no, it looks like shit. Grow your hair back. Yeah, true. So you know, for a guy like him, and again, I'm not blowing smoke up his ass, but this guy in in the amount of years he's been in wrestling, will and I told him this in a car earlier. You will forget more than most people ever learn in this business. So there's anybody that would want to pick his brain i'm going right to the source right here yeah, true. you know so and and you know he's he's helped me a lot throughout my career and i think that's what's also helped our cohesiveness in in doing this tag team piece because as we talk more we start to realize we follow the same guys we came up with in wrestling as far as who we studied yeah. we have a kin for that certain style of wrestling and you know so it's it's a credit a lot on his end nice. yeah. we get along well that's good. That's the yeah. first part to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of crazy because at North Plainfield, you guys are wrestling each other and also in Edison. Yeah. Uh, you know, how does it go from beating the crap out of each other to now teaming with each other? Is there, is there like, 
you know, like, those are great matches. Yeah, they, they were. They well, were. Uh, he almost broke the barricade. Those were two <laughs> matches, right? Two matches that we did. There was two mm-hmm. matches that we did, and um, we something we always talked about <coughs> because I really, first and foremost, I'm a big fan of his. Um, mm-hmm. I always was. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. I saw him at the uh, Wrestle Pro School. Mm-hmm. And the first thing that I admired <coughs> was his old school grittiness and the way he sold and the way he put things over. I said, hey, man, you know, you kind of remind me of like a bunkhouse buck, like Terry Funk, you know, type of deal with some Arn Anderson thrown in there, you know, and he was like, really? So I, like, I got his attention because I guess that's what he was really, yeah, that's what he was digging. And you know, um, and I, I approached him differently. Like uh, everybody's like, "Oh, the moves is on." You know, I like your footwork and I like your mannerisms and how you grab somebody. And it's nothing's quiet. Everything's loud. Everything's a loud slap. Even when you grab someone to pick them up, it's something physical. It's not nothing easy. It's something physical. Your demeanor is very deliberate in that ring. I said, I, I like that. It's things you can't teach. And we just started, like, talking back and forth. And then it was, like, it turned into, hey, oh, man, you go to this gym? I was like, yeah. And then started working out. And then the workouts, like, it was just we were talking more and more and more about wrestling. And then you get to know each other more and more and more. And then it was like, you start becoming fans of each other. Yeah. And um, it's like, oh, man, I really dig what you did in this match. I did what you did here. And then we had a chance we always wanted to do these matches. We always wanted to work each other. I was like, listen, I really want to work you. I like, I want to work you too, but who the hell's going to book it? You know, um, so, uh, I forget the name, Dan Ram. Mm-hmm. Da- Dan <laughs> Ram gave us gave us two two shots at it, you know, and, um, and we did it. We did it there, you know. I'm happy we got it there, and I'm happy we did it. I wish the crowds were bigger. Yeah, because those matches were freaking awesome. Yeah, it was really awesome. Uh, I, remember, I remember that barricade like coming at me. I was like, oh man, I'm glad I'm a little couple hours back. Yeah, yeah, I was like, damn. I was like, yeah, you, you guys almost. I thought, I thought one of you guys were definitely hurt. I was. Just, I'm glad to see that you guys are okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, like I said, it's like it, it, those matches that we wanted and and we did them. And it's just, it's just, you know, you wish. That it was in front of like a sold out rec center or yeah. something, you know, but yeah. but it wasn't, you know. Those matches are there and they can be done again, mm-hmm. you know. They they they, they the right can, context they can be, be done, done again if done right, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, right now we're just really focused on um sense of slaughter mm-hmm. and where where it's going and where we're heading, you know. Um, I have a couple other small you know things that I have to take care of, but you know, it's uh nothing's gonna veer me. Mm-hmm. Um, for 2019 inside the slaughter let me ask you this you, you you recently in that video that you put out i mean you called out lax and the briscoes i mean you you've had history with these guys for a long time uh and you essentially just let the whole tag team division know on the indie scenes that you guys are coming um no we're here oh no, yeah no, we're here <laughs> yeah you're here um we're here like a lot of people may not like it mm-hmm. but we're here yeah what what made you call out those two teams specifically briscoes and lax Cause if you're in this game, mm-hmm. you don't you don't call out the weakest guy in the room. Mm-hmm. You call out the biggest dog in the room. Mm-hmm. I want LAX. That's the best of the best. If I can't be in the ring with the best of the best, mm-hmm. I don't belong in there. If I can't be in the ring with the Briscoes, I don't want to be in there. I want to be in there <clears throat> with the best. Mm-hmm. I'm calling out the young bucks. Wow. I'm calling them all out. Mm-hmm. Bullet Club, everybody. Cody, everybody. Kenny, Cody, everybody. They're all getting called mm-hmm. out. Everybody. Yeah. I, you know, I remember, you know, watching, you know, LAX with Homicide and, and Hernandez throwing people against the, the walls of the rec center. Are you guys going to be like that, that rugged style? Are you you know, or are you just going to keep that in the ring? And, and or we have to wait to find out. Come to the show and find out. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I mean, there's nothing that we said in that promo that wasn't fake it's all real you know what i mean there, there's a lot of reasons like he said why we haven't gotten our break and it's because we are that good and 
look, there's a lot of politics in wrestling and, you know, guys are going to use their friends in certain ways. And But at the end of the day, the cream always rises to the top. And, you know, as much as I love singles wrestling, as much as he loves singles wrestling, you know, we both grew up on tag wrestling. And I believe that still in this day and age, it is a lost art of tag team wrestling. And it doesn't have to be about today's style of that high flying and all these crazy double team moves. That's not the shit that we do. We're just, like he said, we're rugged badasses. You know what I mean? We're legit in that ring and the way we do things. And I, I dare anybody to find a tag team out there that looks as legitimate as we do in a wrestling ring. Everything from our gear that is very professional, the way we handle ourselves in a locker room, mm -hmm. the way we handle ourselves out in front of a crowd, there, there's there's nobody in wrestling that is like us. And I guarantee you there's probably nobody else in a long time coming that will probably look as good as us in the ring. And we're only just getting started. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very confident in 2019. That's That's our focus, 2019 is getting this bad boy going 100 percent full steam ahead we're focused on tag team wrestling and the magic that we can bring so, yeah. so mm, listen if you want to talk about you know the the elite right now in tag team <laughs> wrestling you know of course you know you have the usos you have <clears throat> you have uh the revival fuck those guys you know i mean you, you have you have all these teams up there that, that, that are doing their thing, but I'm talking about on another scale, you know, you're talking about, you know, where the hard work is really, really done. You know, you got, you got Homicide, you know, and you, you have Hernandez, you know, you have Ortiz and Santana, you know, right now there is nobody better, nobody better. That's a machine right there. I mean, there's nobody better. There, I'm, listen, that's where it's at right now. Mm -hmm. You know, the Young Bucks. You know, they, they, there's other guys out there. We haven't forgotten about them either. There's other guys like the Graysons. There's other guys like the Ducks, like Bear Country. Like private all these party. other teams, Private Party. You know what I mean? They're going to get some too. We're going to get to you. Oh, we're going to get to all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We're going to get to all of them. Yeah, OVE too. Same with that. There's OVE of... too. You know, they, everybody, you all, when we say you've all been put on notice, mm -hmm. We are not playing around. They have all been put on notice. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to get to you. Yeah. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to you. Yeah. And you better you better show us some respect. You better you better pay some attention to us. Because yeah. if we got to come to you and get your attention, you're not going to like it. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. So yes. what, what, what like keeps like you guys motivated? Like, Do you guys still feel like at this stage in your careers like that you still have something to prove? I have oh. everything to prove every day. Every yeah. day? Every day, every day, one more rep, yeah, one more rep. Put it this way: there, there's, you know, we talk about it all the time. We work out the, some of the workouts that we do. There's not a lot of guys putting that same effort in the gym. And look, we're not bodybuilders, you know. We don't, we're not cut up with abs, yeah, type of shit. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We're putting in the work while a lot of people are still sitting at home, mm -hmm. and they're 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 emailing fucking promoters, willing to work for five dollars on a hot dog, you know, all that type of stuff. But they're not putting the work in outside yeah. and that's what keeps us going because again it's all about your look too and how you can go in the ring mm -hmm. you know we take he takes off that vest i take off my jacket i'm sorry we look like professional wrestlers we look like we are going to eat your ass for breakfast yeah. and that's what keeps me going every day because i still got something to prove yeah. you know he still feels like he has something to prove mm -hmm. and that's what keeps me going every day because you know what at the end of the day yeah there are kids that are or guys that are out there in tag division that are younger than us, that's totally cool. But they're also those same guys that can't go like us. Man. Don't matter how young you are, how old you are, you better be able to go. And he and I can go all day long in the ring. Yeah. And that's what proves us, that's what sets us apart. And that's what makes me want to go every day. Because I still got something to prove, you know, after all these years. And it doesn't stop. And I think our passion is still there. Mm -hmm. My passion for wrestling is now more than ever I think is at an all-time high. There's not one moment that goes by that I don't eat, sleep, breathe, and shit this business. I study it 24-7. I'm watching new things. I'm sending him matches. He's sending me stuff. Mm -hmm. It's our love, you know. Where a lot of kids get into this business, they don't have that same love and that passion. They see all the 
the flips and the dives and the moves and they think that's what professional wrestling is. It's not. Yeah. It's a story. It's the emotion. And you're talking to a master right here when it comes to intensity and emotion and what he can bring out of a crowd, you know, like Moff can. Yeah. So something that's uh, also interesting to me, um, you said every tag team has been put on notice. You're part of a historic tag team, one of the best tag teams ever in the hit squad. You now I'm different. calling them out too. You're in a different stage of your career. I'm gonna call them out too. You're one away. You're one away. You're, 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 you're in a you're in a different stage of your career now. Sent to slaughter. Your old partner. He's at a different stage in his career now. He has a new tag team partner now in Magic, legendary Magic. Oh, Are they on notice too? <laughs> Is everybody on notice? Everybody's on notice. Everybody's on notice. Simple. That's Everybody's all I need to know. On <laughs> you know, I'll tell you a funny story. It's kind of, you know, because again, I grew up on tag team wrestling. And even as a fan, I always tended to follow the indies a lot more. And, you know, uh, he started obviously a couple of years, you know, prior to, I, to when I did. Mm -hmm. And even when I was still a fan, I was going to charity hall in bayonne and i was watching you know i guess what you would consider the the mid to early days of of the his squad while they were still well formed and you know i would go with a, a buddy of mine uh and man these two guys walk out and i'm scared shitless if, there, if there's anybody i walked out of the locker room that was more legit than steve mack and dan moff just yeah. throwing guys in the walls mm -hmm. but i was drawn to them because it wasn't a character. Yeah. These were real badasses that you did not want to mess with. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, the opportunity to go to WrestlePro, first guy whose brain I'm going to pick is this guy. Yeah. You know, because I'm such a fan of his work. I have been since even before I got into business. And that's where I think a lot of that chemistry is there too, is just being a fan of each other's work. And when you have that, the sky's the limit. So, yeah. like yeah. he says, everyone's on notice. Everyone's on notice. I'll say this. I mean, Can't wait to see that. It's not easy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because you can sit here and say, yeah, I want this, I want that. You know? mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's the fans, you know, that they have the they have the driver's keys, you know. They they're sitting in the driver's seat. It's the fans, you know. It's, we just can't show up at a show and say, Hey, we're gonna work these guys. Like it has to be a promoter that has to think it's gonna work. Yeah. And say, Okay, well, we're gonna do this. You know, it's up to us, and this is real talk, you know, mm -hmm. it's up to us, it's up to Sean and Danny, you know, to get this thing off the ground, get it running, get the word out, mm -hmm. have good matches, um, build a rapport, and, you know, just keep having good matches, <laughs> keep setting uh Road, setting the bar, you know, setting the bar and setting, setting, setting your own path, you know, and um, so you can build and finally get to the LAXs, get to the Briscoes, get to teams, you know, like Santana and Ortiz, get to the homicides, and um, Hernandez, Hernandez, yeah. you know, and get and get to the OVEs, <clears throat> get to these guys. You know, because that that's where you want to be. If you don't want to be in the fight and you don't want to be out there rubbing shoulders with mm -hmm. those guys, with the with the with the cream of the you know, mm -hmm. the cream of the crop, then get on the other side of the guardrail, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stop wasting all our time. Stop wasting everybody's mm -hmm. time. Yeah. If you're not going to bed getting excited, thinking about what these matches can be and feeling it, mm -hmm. or just sitting there talking about it. He and I sit there, we talk about the things that we could do with some of these guys in there. And I'm, I'm going to say plain as day, it's like getting a heart on. Mm -hmm. Like it's getting excited. It's, you feel it. Yeah. As you, we talk about it, you can feel it. And that's what drives us, you know, because I know what he and I can do in the ring. And I know what he and I can do against some of these other teams. And that's how we're going to knock those doors down. We're going to start showing people exactly what we can do in there. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of... Um, <coughs> There's going to be a lot of barriers we got to break through. Yeah. But we're going to break through them one match at a time. We're going to make people take notice and say, I need these guys in my promotion. Yeah. I need these guys in my locker room. 
because we don't just bring legitimacy inside the ring. We bring legitimacy to a locker room too. You know, we want to be the guys that when we walk through a locker room, everybody takes notice. Yeah. That's, that's our goal. Sure. Yeah. yeah uh, I'll never forget when I was backstage at JFP, I was so intimidated saying next to you and, and Ma. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm Mac, uh, because just the reputation, I guess, and, and knowing that you guys are such, there was a wall behind me too that I could probably have been faced <laughs> at. And I was so nervous. I was like, these guys are, I grew up watching you guys, you know, destroy people uh, at JP and, and um, it's crazy. Now that this tag team is formed, you know, I'm worried about those wrestlers across the ring from you. And, and uh, I don't want to see them get destroyed <laughs> like that. So, someone <laughs> just said it was recently with that, that uh, they said, if I didn't know who you guys were and I saw the way you guys stood in the ring together, I would have thought I was walking in dead to rights about to die. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, when you entered the cage at, at the anniversary show, uh, I was like, damn, I, I don't want to see, you know, Homicide and, and Loki, uh, like, be brutalized. And <laughs> But they brought the fight to you that night mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but looking at you two guys now, oh, man, I, I don't envy your opponents one bit, one uh, <laughs> well, at all. I think, and I think Moffat would agree with me, yeah, they, we want that intimidation factor, but we want that respect factor, too, yeah. in that. Yeah. But that means, that intimidation factor means we want you to come ready to go because mm -hmm. if you're not ready to go with us we're just going to eat your ass alive and i'm sorry that's you know to me that's an old honky-tonk man saying either we're all going to look good or we're going to look good at the end of the day yeah. mm -hmm. and we're not here to play games yeah. this is yeah. serious business this is not like i said in the promo too this is not some short-term concept that people think we're going to tag for a little bit and go around several ways no people have no idea just how passionate we are about making this work because it's not just a team too. There's never been a name like that either for a tag team. Yeah. And I think it just speaks volumes. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful mission statement that this, you guys are sent to really, you know, cause some pain. Uh, We're here to do the devil's dirty work. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, name, that name was I give that credit. That name was all was all off. That I, just came out in just a conversation. We're talking about different things and yeah. that just came out in a conversation i said that's it that's the name nice. can't be anything different yeah you know that speaking of like the uh, the intimidation factor um i remember the first time i, I met you I, I know you don't remember it was a long time ago and um this is like i was working back in jersey gardens and you came into one of the stores and shopping. i'm like is that dan moff i'm like it's dan moff but you know, anybody who knows Dan Moff that doesn't know Dan Moff is like, yo, you don't fuck with Dan Moff. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you seen him, and I was just like, I was like, I was like, excuse me, sir. And uh, you're like, yeah. And then I was like, uh, are you a wrestler? <laughs> you're like, yeah. You didn't, you didn't even look at me. You're like, yeah. And I was like. Do you mind if I get a picture with you? Then you smile. You're like, yeah, of course. And I was like, I want to kill your character. Yeah, but I was like, I was like, he's such a nice guy, man. Is this at Nautica? This was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. This was. It's so funny. So I was like, it's you so a, funny. You had a better first time meeting him than I did. See, I had the wrong impression. I met his ass when I first met him at the same gym we worked out at. I'm like, oh, shit. That's damn off. Yeah. And we, we, we had some mutual friends of ours. And, of course, you know, nobody likes to be bothered when they're in the middle of a set at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I introduced myself to him, you know, told him, you know, I, I'm a wrestler too and, you know, big fan of his work and, you know, a couple of friends of mine and, you know, I, the, the, the way he responded was very nice. I'll give him that. He wasn't a jerk, but it was basically get the fuck away from me. <laughs> I am trying to grow these arms as big as they can be. But, the, but it was funny because then I just, I kept seeing Jim. I just, hey, how are you? You know, and then it just, you know, and then when I was able to, when it was the right time to come to Wrestle Pro and. Things kind of just took itself from there. But, you know, word of the wise, if you see Dan Moff at a gym, do not come anywhere near him while he's working out. <laughs> Gorilla likes space. Yes, he does. <laughs> That's a tweet. I remember I used to run up to, like, the barricade to see you at the JP shows. And then whenever the matches used to break up, I used to follow whoever it was in the crowd, up the bleachers. Uh -huh. There's times where I remember I, like, I took, like, a, a, a snack tray. That, like somebody threw and I just took the snack tray home. I was like, this is awesome. Like and, I, and like Teddy Hart one time did um a moonsault from the right apron and he landed on the chair. He was still going for homicide and I took the broken chair home. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> like I just couldn't get enough of those places yeah. and then watching you guys 
uh, kill it. But one of the most impressive things I've ever seen was that you did the burning hammer to Fala Ba. Oh, I mean, how yeah. was that? You know, because he's a big guy. I mean, I'm sure you picked up other people, but how was it hitting that burning hammer on him? You know, there's different stages of Fala. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's Fala Ba um, at 420. There's Fala Ba at 450. And that's followed by to be continued. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I got a. I have a funny story. The first time that I picked up follow up was in practice. Uh, it was actually a setup. It was it was before a show, before the day of the show, and uh, I was like, I was like, listen, I want to pick you up for Burning Hammer, but I don't want to give it to you. He was like, first of all, how am I gonna get up there? <laughs> And he got real serious. He said, first of all, brother, how am I going to get up there? And second of all, how am I getting down? <laughs> <laughs> right, that's Brandy. Yep. Very serious. <sighs> I said, listen, man. I said, do you trust me? He said, yes, but not how you're talking to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. I said, Let, just get up here. We'll figure out how you're going to get up here later. But just get up here. Let me pick you up now. So when I picked him up the first time in practice, this the initial sound that I heard was, "Oh my God!" <laughs> because he was never he was never picked up off his feet. Mm -mm. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you're laying on someone's shoulders and your hands are you're basically laying dead. It's pretty intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, and I just walk around with you. So when I picked him up, like everybody, you know, like everybody's, you know. You hear, you hear the hammer, you hear the wrenches, you hear tape, you hear this. Mm -hmm. It's a whole, it's a full setup. Everybody's working, the whole production. And when I picked up Fran, when I picked up Fala, I call him Francis. When I pick up Francis and, and, and I have on my shoulders, it's like everybody just stopped. You hear a pin drop. Wow. And they said, okay, okay, oh God, okay, now put me down. Put me down. So I just went, okay. And I put him down. He says, how fucking strong are you? Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, uh, and, so, I can, and I can lay claim because I've known Fowler since day one. He started wrestling. He has never been picked up like that before because he's, no one can pick him up like yeah, that. Yeah. So for him to be in that, that position, it can be for anybody. But yeah. for a guy his size who's used to being the big guy, him picking him up. Does that help your bond? Because you guys are part of the Dear Good Friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what is that for exactly for people who don't know what Dear Good Friends are? I mean, uh, besides just a social media account, it looks like it's a real growing uh, beast, right? It's a, it's a real thing. Um, you know, it's a family. We, it's a, we love each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, it's a band of brothers. You know, our kids play together. Our wives know each other. You know, um, we babysit each other's kids, mm -hmm. and everybody, it's like, you know, we have Thanksgiving together, we have Christmas together, New Year's yes. together, you know, it's, it's, we try to vacation together, um, you know, it, it's... We're a family. We spend yeah. more time around each other than we do a lot of other members of our own legitimate families, because yeah. that's how close we are. And again, it's just something that just comes together, where you just click with people on the same level and even though what brought us together is is pro wrestling we all have a lot of the same interests universally outside and that helps our relationship grow you know like i said you know i i come over his house and his his youngest daughter calls me you know uncle dipsy yeah. you know and i'll sit there and play games with her and talk with her and that that's that's a bond that you don't get a lot in in wrestling because a lot of you meet a lot of guys in locker rooms you won't see them you know, you'll see him every now and then. Or you come over at midnight and we'll have a five course dinner. Yeah, you know, come home for a show. I mean, but that you see that, and that's a respect factor there, and that's a humbling respect factor to be in one of your boys' homes at midnight, and and their wife is there to serve you a hot meal. Yeah, you know that doesn't happen with everybody. You know what I mean? And there's only a select, small group. You know, and to to be a part of that circle. You know, in my eyes, is something very special. That's the, that's a group of friendships that I will take to my grave someday. 
you know, I will take a bullet for any of those guys in that group, just like I know they would take a bullet for me. And we look out for each other, not just in the ring, outside the ring. I made a lot of relationships at Russell Pro. Nice. You know, um, you know, friends with people who I'll be friends with, you know, forever. You know, Pat Buck and his wife. You know, Kevin Matthews. Um, I mean, I've known Kevin for probably twenty years, but. I really got to know him here. Um, you know, um, Craig Steele. Mm-hmm. You know, his son is my godson. You know, yeah. it's 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 the bonds that that that, 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 that happen. You know, and the relationships that you built. You know, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, I, I dare you it. trust people and and. and you bond with people, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. What are you saying? No, when you say we are WrestlePro, we're a legit family. You know, yeah. we're all very close. I I would put our locker room against any other locker room and how many guys are as close as a family, you know, and I think that's what helps us keep going with WrestlePro and trying to make that something bigger is because we're all family. And yeah, we, we get all, on each other's nerves a little bit yeah. every now and then. <laughs> but we, but we want to see everybody <laughs> succeed, though, and that's the thing. The more we all succeed the more the brand succeeds. But like yeah. you said, you grow those relationships with people on a friend on a friendship level. Mm-hmm. You know, where else on New Year's are you going to find 85% of the WrestlePro roster in his kitchen down in shots of, you yeah. know, Fireball, Fireball and Patron <laughs> and, and all that because that's, that's we're, we're a legit family. You know what I mean? And we're, it's that Three Musketeers saying is one for all, all for one. And that's, like I said, I would put our locker room up against a lot of other locker rooms and how close knit our locker room is compared to others. Yeah. Now, when it when it comes to, um, I guess I should ask, do you do you ever like feel like how important you are to wrestling in general? No. But wrestle bro, because even like when when I'm pretty sure you got you got young kids that want to pick your brain and get advice, and then you got someone like Sean Donovan sitting here, a veteran that comes to you and picks your brain for advice like do like how does that feel to you to like just know like or or does it even do you even realize it like how big a part you are um i'm just a normal guy man um you know i just try to i'm just a normal guy trying to blend in Mm -hmm. i'm trying to have the best matches i can and um Try to fly under the radar as much as I can, yeah. and you know if you don't like me, I'm sorry. You know you don't know me, yeah. but I'm gonna kill you with my smile. I'm yeah. not gonna argue back with you. <clears throat> I'm gonna kill you with my smile and good performances. <clears throat> and if you like me, and if we get along, hey, great man. You know, let's like conquer the world together, man. Let's have fun. <laughs> let's smile. Let's eat. I love to eat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's eat, man. Let's drink and let's have fun. You know, and let's and let's smile because, you know, tomorrow's never promised. Yeah. You know, I don't know when my last day of year is gonna be. You know, I I don't know. I can leave here now and it's over. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow's never promised. It's true. You know, um, I don't know. But I just maybe Sean's a better guy to ask that question to than me because I I just. I could easily answer. He that tells story. me that all the time, and I'm just like, I, do. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he realizes from an in the business perspective how many people know who he is, and how many people have asked me, "Oh my God, I see you, damn it! How, who is this guy? Like, how, how do you like? How is he? Like, how is he? Is he approachable? Things of nature. He does that, and most people probably wouldn't realize how much of an impact they've made to others, you know, in the business. And I tell him that all the time, and I know he finds that hard to believe. But, you know, there is a special nature of him because there is nobody out there that is like him. Yeah. You know, guy walks through a curtain, commands attention, commands respect. You know, you guys, you sit on in, in the crowd, you watch shows. Mm-hmm. How many guys who walk through that curtain really feel that special? Yeah. There's a certain aura when he walks through a curtain. Yeah. And that's, you know, and for fans, but I think more so there is an aura of him behind the scenes. Like I said, he walks into a locker room, commands attention. And it's because of 
where he's been, what he's done, the level of matches that he's had mm-hmm. at such peak levels, you know, like I said, I, and, and you know, I wish more guys would, would attempt to pick his brain. Yeah. Um, like I said, the game is a little different now in wrestling. It's not the way that it used to be. And I don't think the young kids in locker rooms pick the veterans' brains as much as they used to anymore. Yeah. Um, and if there's one guy, any any young kid in the locker room should make a point of going over and introducing themselves and asking them to watch their match would be this guy. Yeah. But a lot of times he'll go out of his way and he will watch matches just to see what's going on. And he'll genuinely give you some real feedback. Like you said, you might, he said you might not like what he's got to say, but he's going to shoot straight with you because he wants to see people succeed. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's, that's how, and I know I say that, but that's how a lot of guys in the locker rooms feel about somebody like Moff. Yeah, I mean, every guest we've ever had mm-hmm. on has always said something positive about you, always thanked you yeah. for, for giving them advice and stuff like that. You know, rival promotions, mm-hmm. I mean, they've always, always have said wonderful things about you. And I think that's a testament to your character. You know, like, like he was just saying, um, I, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine a wrestling world without Dan Moff <laughs> and Monster Mac. I mean, you guys literally changed tag team wrestling uh, and um, we were just grateful that you even decided to come here and even you Sean you know with this experience um, that you have that you guys even decided to come talk to us and we really do appreciate that um, well, we appreciate you giving us the opportunity <clears throat> you know to get this thing you know out there and try to share it with as many people as I can yeah. every every little bit helps you know Everyone plays a, a small part in the growth of something. And, and it's not easy. Listen, I'm, I'm not saying by any stretch of imagination that set to slaughter is going to, you know, rewrite the history books and we're going to wrestle on the moon and all that stuff. Um, what the future holds, I don't know. We just want to But make what we mind. want, we want everything in the world in it. That's you know. We want to make our mark and leave a mark. When, <laughs> when, um, when I last saw you wrestle, it was against Grimm at Battle Club Pro, and you grabbed the microphone and the fans were cheering, fuck Father Time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the next night you had Jimmy Havoc. You know, th- those are some big time matches. You know, Mr. Grimm is no slouch and Jimmy Havoc, of course. Um, um, do you still have that desire for, or are you, Sean, for a singles career, or now it's just tag team, tag team all the way, or just uh, once in a while break out that singles competition? I mean, listen, I love wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the beauty of what we do is that you can step out of character and you could be who you want to be. When I walk out, the, when I hear that music and I walk out that curtain, I leave all my problems. Man, I'm whole. I'm like, I'm in heaven. I'm, I'm where I want to be. Mm-hmm. You can't hurt me. I, I can't be hurt. I can't get sick. I can't get hurt out there. Yeah. I feel so mm-hmm. safe and I'm surrounded by the fans that love me and I love them. So it's like such a, it's such a euphoric feeling that the other side is awesome too. Mm -hmm. You know, where you can be a heel and you could be that guy that came to the village to burn the whole village down and, you know, vandalize every church and throw all your Bibles out and rip all the pages up, burn the whole library, burn all your books. You know, it's like, it's, it's, but it's so good to be that way. But it's also so special to be able to do both. Mm-hmm. You know, I love being that baby face, that fiery baby face, you know, and, and I love what I do, man. And there's certain things like when I go to Battle Club and when I go to these places, um, I go with a chip on my shoulder because I have a lot to prove. I'm the old dog that has to still. I'm walking through the yard. I always say, "Hey, look, this is this is my yard," and I really believe that. But 
I got to keep that yard. Like, you just don't walk around just saying it's your yard, people. No. Every once in a while, there's going to come a dog that's going to try you. It's going to test you. And you got to you gotta show your worth. You got you to gotta show them. You know, no, this is my yard. Yeah, not, I mean, not yet. You know, not yet. This is my yard. But like I said, like I love doing... The, 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 the singles thing, I love doing the Santa Slaughter thing, you know. I, I also, I have some things, like, that I really need to take care of at What Wrestling. Um, you know, it's been an unbelievable ride up there. It's been, a, like, a legendary run up there. I'm actually undefeated at What, and I'm fighting AR Fox. You know, first time ever, you know, for the What title. And... Those are, those are other things, you know, that I got to do. You know, I'm also, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of, you know, I'm still on the hunt for the silver title. But, you know, but I've never, hold, I've never held the gold title at WrestlePro. And if I ever get a hold of that gold title, God help the tag division. Because that's nothing that I would want more than to be a triple crown champion. And hold, that'll be the only title that I ever held as a tag title. And if you want me to team up with WrestlePro, I'm not doing it with anyone except the man on my left right now. Because this guy knows what I'm doing even without me. I, all I have to do is look at him. Yeah, I feel bad for like Team Espana or <laughs> <Don't lie>. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Bodies or any tag team in <laughs> WrestlePro. CPA and Habib. Yeah. <laughs> Breakfast club. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't agree any more with, with the stuff that that Mob said. You know, I think again, we're at different points in our careers too. You know, mm -hmm. to me, you know, I, I look at still. I know I'm the guy that's right there. I'm the guy that's you know same thing. I'm I'm looking to show people, hey, you know, I'm the sleeper mm -hmm. in anybody's locker room. I just wrestled on impact, you know. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. How was that? Mm -hmm. Amazing experience. You know, it wasn't something that was planned. It was just an opportunity to say, hey, okay, they put this in front of me. And, uh, you know, after, you know, almost two decades, I just went out there and I just did what I needed to do because yeah. two things are going to happen. I'm going to walk into that, walk to the back afterwards, and I'm either going to shit the bed. Or, mm -hmm. or I'm going to walk through that curtain and I'm going to turn people's ears up and make people open their eyes. Yeah. Because I got nothing, I got nothing, you know, to, to uh, lose. Mm -hmm. And I walked through that curtain and I opened up people's ears and I turned on people's eyes. Not too many people are as comfortable as this guy is <laughs> once the cameras are on. The, it's like the more pressure the situation the more relaxed and the more calm he is. He may tell you he's worried or he may piss a hundred times before mm -hmm. his match, you know, but he's as cool as a cucumber. And that's what's special because I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like no matter how, how, how much the pressure is in the situation, you know, you're walking into this thing and you know, man, it's fucking big. And I'm just like, I'm whistling right to the graveyard, brother. You know, it's like, how can you be so calm? It's like... It's because confidence and it's all those years of experience and, you know, I will tell anybody... But I'm nervous. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm nervous as hell. But I just happen to look calm. I all I just say is I <laughs> sit there and, and, you know, he and I talk. He said it will come. When those opportunities come, i got nothing to lose. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to make you remember something about me, yeah. you know, and that's, that's how I am. I want to go out there. I want to have the best match on the card. I want to go out there. I want fans to remember, Hey, that guy is the biggest scumbag I have ever seen, but damn, he commands attention, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that's how I am. I'm just like him. There's a euphoric feeling. You, you could have, I, I could own four dogs and you could have, Chop them all up, and I will still go out there, cool as a cucumber, because you can't hurt me in that ring. And when it when it comes to like um, character, um, do you guys see it as you guys just being yourself, or because like I'll say when 
like you like who you remind me of when it comes to like heel work and face work remind me of Taz. It was like Taz is like a legit. Yeah. He's, he's like, a, but no, he's like he's he's a legit. Badass. He's, that's that's who you remind me of. He's like a legit badass, and it's like you respect him as a face. You respect him as a, a hill. I love Taz. Yeah, and then you know with with Sean, it's like I told you this last time we talked. I told you like when it comes to hills, like I think like you, Bobby Wayward, even Eagles Ricos. And like the Miz are like the four people that you just you can't like them. That's the Mount Rushmore. You, you can't <laughs> like them, yeah. You you just hate them no matter what. You know what it is, and it, it's it's not anything to say that I wouldn't you don't mind that 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 good guy run. Uh-huh. But I'm naturally an asshole. <laughs> no, I am. I am the guy that likes to poke the bear, uh-huh. and I like to keep poking the bear. Yeah. You know, and that's, but that's me with a crowd. Or a gorilla. Yeah. yeah. Or a gorilla. <laughs> I, I like to poke the crowd because I, I, here's my thing with wrestling, and I know we're in 2018 and things are different in society now, mm. but I'm sorry. There are very few real, legitimate heels left in wrestling because nobody wants to be a heel. Yeah. There's that gray area. A lot of guys, even as quote unquote heels, mm-hmm. they want to do all these cool moves that they want, they want to get that indie reaction of this is awesome this is what i don't want any of that shit i don't sell merchandise yeah. i do none of that because my job when i walk out there is to be the biggest piece of shit you have ever seen yeah. that's my job and whatever that promoter wants me to do that night that's but that's me and that's me being real to who i am because who i am now is really what i am it's just me with the volume turned all the way up yeah. And I want to be that. I'm not afraid of quote unquote real heat. Yeah. I want to be the guy that you want to take a full Pepsi can and throw at me in the ring. I'm the guy that you want to find my car in the parking lot and you want to slash my tires. Please don't do that to us. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you want to do that, that means I did something right. I got yeah. under your skin in a certain way. And I don't think that the yes, envelope... I'm going to send you to the bill if it's my truck there. That's I'm fine. Man. I will pay the bill. But, you know, there's there's not too many guys that are in wrestling now that want to be that guy. Yeah. I've never been afraid of that legitimate type of heat. Yeah. Because I don't think the envelope has been able to have been pushed like I know it can be in a long time because of how wrestling has changed. And I get it. The TV product has to be... PG or PG-13 because, yes, there are sponsors and, and obviously mm-hmm. you have to answer to somebody. Yeah. And even still on the independents, you have a promoter, you have to answer to them. But if they're willing to put something on you, and yes, they have limits, there's still ways around it. But I still feel like it's there are not very many legitimate heels in wrestling anymore that are afraid to push the envelope like I know I can. Yeah. And that's and I know he's been this he's the same way in a different way. Is he a super crazy pro? Mm-hmm. In Philly, mm-hmm. this man made a quadriplegic stand up out of a chair and take <laughs> off his shirt and want to fight chair. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow, yeah, that's crazy. I think a lot of times people don't realize. <laughs> I think they they just realize like being cheered is like a good thing, but they don't realize like getting heat is a good thing too. Yeah. You know, it's it's a, it's a reaction from the crowd. Some promoters get scared. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Yeah. I'll fight anybody and ever, anybody in that crowd. If I'm going to get my ass kicked by 10 fans, I'm going to go down swinging. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still going to talk shit afterwards. <laughs> but that's okay. but that's what it is, man. It's mm-hmm. it's about doing your job, yeah. you know. And and again, that I left fans that night, they remembered something. Yeah. This guy made a quadriplegic stand up, take off his shirt, and want to fight him. Oh my goodness, that's yeah, it's funny. Just... You know, but that's but that's the beauty of wrestling. What we do is an art form that a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. It's not about the moves in the ring. Yeah. It's about the story. It's how we can make you feel as a person. Yeah. It's how we can make you feel leaving that building. I don't remember anything else but Dan Moff. Holy shit! Yeah. If anything else on that show was fake or scripted this guy's the real deal True. that's that's the way it has to be and if we do that then that means we've done our job we've earned our money and we've done right by the promoter True. of bringing that person in and, and doing business of what they asked of you to do 
You know, yeah. funny story. A little side note. Mm -hmm. I was at the tapings for Impact. Mm -hmm. About a month ago? Two months ago? Yeah. About two months ago. And this big, giant... I don't know. What, all I saw was everything get dark around me. Mm -hmm. And I felt... Boom, I felt something just grabbed me from behind. Mm -hmm. And when I looked up, it was abyss. <laughs> I was like... Oh my God. He said, he's holding me. And he's like, brother, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Mm -hmm. And then when he turned me around, he put me down. He turned me around. He says, holy shit, it's Moth. I thought you were Taz. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we were laughing. That's so funny. Uh, That's so, funny. Dan, mm -hmm. one last question before we ask you guys what your social media is. Mm -hmm. uh, who's ducking you more, Brock Lesnar or Delroy? Delroy. <laughs> you guys are still ducking. We still talking about Delroy? Delroy, this not going to happen. Delroy, where are you? <laughs> Delroy's hiding behind his newborn. Yeah, Delroy actually has a beautiful son, yes. Daniel. And... Um, He's, uh, you know, he's telling me he's taking care of things. He's taking care of what he got to take care of. Good, he's man. one of my favorite students. And um, he's a good young man. And he'll be back. And when he's back, you know, he's just going to have to get a partner now. But we're going to do our thing. Mm -hmm. right. Right, guys. So, guys, in closing, where can people get you on social media if they want to connect, if they want to be part of the Dear Good Friends uh, movement? Where can mm -hmm. they find that, too? You can you can find me. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, once at a blue moon on Snapchat, all at Sean Donovan Zero uh, One. You can follow Dear Good Friends. We're just on on uh, Instagram at uh, Dear Good Friends. So if you if you want to see uh, the gorilla in hibernation asleep, if you want to see the gorilla yelling at dogs and ducks, um, if you want to just see just some some wacky stuff, you know, the, 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 the colorful side of, of some of us sometimes. Life um, on the road. Life on the road, you know what I mean? Road drives, that's where you can find us. You know, Moff will tell you where you can find him. You know where to find me. Uh, he's, sometimes he's a little out there. Uh, but he's <laughs> he's Danny Moff on uh, Facebook, uh, Danny Moff underscore Russell Pro on Instagram. And I, he's got like seven Twitter accounts that I can't even keep track of, so... <laughs> But yeah, just type in Danny Moff on Twitter. You'll find him. Uh, I don't think he's on Snapchat because uh, he's not no, as gracious with technology as I don't understand some of us are. So, yeah, but or where you want to find him, just look at any promotion that's got his face on a poster. Come watch his work. That's right. Next Saturday we'll be at Pro Wrestling Magic in Richfield Park. It'll be me and Pinky. Beating the holy hell out of each other for the magic title. Mm -hmm. um, you can find us, uh, of course, especially at our home promotion mm -hmm. where it all started, where it all began, where it's all about. It's Wrestle Pro mm -hmm. yeah. and the Worldway Rec Center. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look for me at Super Crazy Wrestling. Mm -hmm. You can look for us at. Uh, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. You guys are going to be at Wow, right? At Wow. Yeah. You, you can look for us USA at Wow. At USA Pro, mm -hmm. you get, we're all over, and we just try to keep busy. Mm -hmm. Just wait till 2019. You're going to find us everywhere eventually at some point, and I'll call promotions out. Chaotic Wrestling, XWA, you name it. We want to be there. We will be there eventually. So Definitely. that's our goal. We really appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, this is a very humbling experience for us. We really appreciate the great Dan Moff here, mm -hmm. the great Sean Donovan Thank here, both together me. at the same time. Thank you for really having us. We really appreciate you guys giving us the honor to do your first interview at Sense of Slaughter. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to have yeah. us on. Yeah. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you guys for everything, for entertaining us for all those matches. And above all, thank you for all the support through the years. Yeah. That Definitely. means the most. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And good luck with this. <laughs> With, with, with this wonderful thing that you guys have built here, Wrestling and I hope that this grows. I hope that this grows. I hope it gets bigger and bigger, and I hope it's successful because I had a great time here. Thank you. We appreciate it. And for us, we are Wrestling IQ 101. You can follow us on Facebook at Wrestling IQ 101, Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And you can listen to us on YouTube right here, or you can follow us on the B Plus Player. Uh, you can listen to us anytime across all forms of social media they have. And we are out.
You have just listened to the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast, powered by B Plus Player Radio. One more for the good guy.